The opening scene of the film shows a luxury, high-tech penthouse in New York, featuring various works of art. The sound of a helicopter approaching one of the high-rise buildings is heard, and a man named Nemo is dropped off at the penthouse. Nemo enters the penthouse with the help of his team's hacker. He only has seven minutes to steal everything he needs, so he immediately starts taking what he can. He manages to grab two of Sheila's artworks. As he passes by a picture on the wall, he pauses for a moment before heading to the master bedroom, where he expects to find Sheila's self-portrait, the main target. However, the self-portrait isn't there. He then searches the video installation room, but finds no painting there either. With only four minutes left, someone on the radio instructs Nemo to take whatever he has and leave. Nemo goes to the smart home's control panel by the door and radios a teammate for the activation code. When he enters the code, an alarm blares throughout the penthouse due to a system malfunction, and Nemo is locked inside. His team panics as they lose access to the smart home's hub. The hacker tries to regain control but fails, and the team decides to abandon Nemo. Nemo attempts to tinker with the smart device, but he only makes things worse. Unsure of what else to do, he decides to turn off the alarm by destroying the penthouse's speakers. Once he finally gets some silence, he returns to the main door and starts chipping away at it. Meanwhile, the malfunctioning monitor causes the temperature to rise, making the penthouse unbearably hot. Nemo stops chipping at the door when he realizes it's reinforced with metal, and he leans against it in frustration. Desperate for food, Nemo scavenges the kitchen and turns on the TV, where he sees live video surveillance from various parts of the building. He eventually finds a room and decides to sleep for the night. The next day, Nemo hears a helicopter and rushes to see if it's his team, but he's disappointed when it's not. He notices an injured pigeon on the balcony and watches as it dies. The temperature continues to rise, and the heat becomes unbearable. Looking around the penthouse, he spots a square-shaped skylight. He begins pulling furniture to the center of the living room, constructing a tower to reach the skylight. Taking a break, Nemo washes up and discovers a mini garden in the living room. He pulls the garden hose from the soil, but there's no water. Left with no choice, he eats ice to quench his thirst and cool himself down. He then continues building the tower. The following day, Nemo draws and plans how to stabilize the tower so it won't collapse. While distracted by the live surveillance, he watches a cleaner eating by the fire exit staircase. He watches her for a while before attempting to use the smart monitor to lower the temperature, but it still doesn't work. In the kitchen, Nemo opens a can of food but cuts his hand in the process. He dips his hand in water to stop the bleeding and tears a piece of his shirt to wrap it. He searches the freezer for ice and rests his head inside, crying as he struggles to survive in the smart penthouse. That night, he watches the dead pigeon under the balcony tree while he eats. The next day, Nemo tries to open a locked door in the kitchen. When he finally gets it open, he finds a stash of dog food. Hearing water flowing from the garden hose, he rushes to drink from it and lays there for a moment, enjoying the coolness of the water. Later, Nemo takes bed and chair straps to secure his tower. He finishes building it and checks the skylight, but returns to the ground to rest. When resting, he obsessively watches the cleaner, whom he has named Jasmine, through the live surveillance feed. He grows attached to watching her, feeling joy whenever she appears and disappointment when the feed switches to another area. One day, Nemo sees Jasmine right outside the penthouse door on the surveillance feed. He rushes to the door, banging and yelling in hopes she will hear him, but she doesn't notice because she's wearing earphones. Defeated, he returns to the feed, only to see that she has left. Meanwhile, the malfunctioning monitor shows the temperature decreasing, and Nemo feels relief as cool air fills the penthouse. He looks at a picture of a group of people standing on an airplane and becomes strangely emotional as he stares at it. The next day, Nemo places bowls in the garden to collect water from the hose. Once the bowls are filled, he pours the water into a bottle for drinking. He spends the day relaxing and listening to music. The following day, Nemo builds a makeshift shade and begins chiseling away at the skylight's frame. After a while, he takes a break and talks to himself while making food from what he finds in the kitchen storage. As he eats, he watches the video surveillance, searching for Jasmine, knowing her routine. He finds her eating on the fire exit staircase again, but this time, she's with another guy. He wondered who the guy was before going back to spalling the skylight frame until he saw a bolt. He breathed heavily in annoyance and began the process of breaking the bolts. That night, 
he observed the people outside using the telescopes. It seemed as if his mind had started deteriorating as he spent his days locked inside the smart penthouse, with no one to talk to and nothing to do besides trying to survive every day. It was getting colder now, so Nemo tried fixing the monitor to control the temperature before the cold got worse, but to no avail. He also noticed that his radio was running out of battery power and felt disappointed knowing his supposed friends were never going to help him again. The next day, he opened his eyes and noticed something odd on the wall. He drew a circle around the strange part of the wall and went to break the bolts of the skylight frame. During his break, he watched Jasmine again. Afterward, he saw a pigeon on the balcony and talked to it, telling the pigeon to go to his friend Danny and inform him that Nemo was stuck in the penthouse so Danny could help him. Nemo chuckled and screamed at the pigeon as if it could understand him. Nemo started messing with the picture frame of the penthouse owners and looked through the closet in the master bedroom. While inside, he noticed a green light seeping through the closet wall. He opened it and walked through a very tight hallway. On the other side, he found the self-portrait he'd been searching for. He turned his head to look around the room and ran away in terror when he saw something that frightened him. After calming down, Nemo returned to the secret room, where the words The Unseen World were displayed on the wall. He approached a body lying on a stone table-like bed in the middle of the dark room. When he touched it, he realized it was just a dummy. Frustrated that he had been scared by it, he pushed the dummy off the table and opened the box, discovering it contained a compilation of The Marriage of Heaven and Hell. He took both the collage and the self-portrait before leaving the secret room. Later that night, he tried to draw and copy a painting on the wall. He looked at the surveillance camera and saw Jasmine sitting just outside the penthouse's main door. He started hitting the door and yelling to get Jasmine's attention. He even tried slipping a piece of paper underneath the door but failed, so he went back to banging on the door and yelling for help. However, his screams went unheard, as Jasmine couldn't hear him despite not wearing earphones this time. The penthouse was so secure that no one could hear him, no matter how much noise he made. That night, Nemo dreamt he was in an art gallery. In the dream, he approached the penthouse owner and talked to him. He noticed Jasmine nearby. The man excused himself, walked toward Jasmine, and whispered something in her ear. Then, he introduced the puppet. The penthouse owner began talking about how humans are like puppets controlled by unseen hands. Nemo walked away from the crowd and left the art gallery. He went up the stairs, which transitioned into the penthouse, revealing that the main door was finally opened. Nemo woke up and walked in front of an aquarium. The next series of scenes showed Nemo going through his daily routine, making a wooden wrench to remove the bolts from the skylight frame, observing the fish, catching one and letting it die out of the water, drawing an eye on the wall and a spiral around it, talking animatedly to himself, drawing, rocking on a chair, eating the fish and removing bolts one by one. He repeated this cycle, reflecting the deterioration of his mind. As he lost his grip on reality, Nemo became fixated on watching Jasmine through the security camera. One day, Jasmine looked directly at the camera, and Nemo convinced himself that she saw him. In the next scene, he talked to a painting on the wall, telling it he was going to set it free before pushing the painting down. He returned to work on the skylight bolts, managing to remove one, but he made a misstep and fell down the tower of furniture. That night, as he rested, he looked outside to see beautiful fireworks lighting up the sky. He then glanced behind him and saw Jasmine standing there, watching him. She silently sat in front of him, staring for a while before leaning forward to ghost her lips over Nemo's. Her hands hovered over his skin without touching him. Just as quickly as she appeared, Jasmine vanished and Nemo laid his head back, knowing it was only his imagination. The next day, Nemo limped to the mirror, still nursing his broken leg from the fall. While tending to the wound on his lips, he hallucinated about the penthouse owner slamming his head into the sink. When he woke up, his nose and mouth were bloody. Looking up at the ceiling, he noticed a sensor. A ray of sunlight hit his drawings on the wall, and he used a magnifying glass to set them on fire. Nemo created a torch and triggered the sensors with it, causing water to pour down inside the penthouse. He rushed to the main door, screaming for help, hoping someone in the building would notice. But it was futile as no one realized a smoke alarm had been set off in the penthouse. All it did was flood the penthouse and break the TV, meaning Nemo could no longer watch Jasmine. Nemo was later seen lying down, reading The Marriage of Heaven and Hell. Outside on the balcony, the image of the penthouse owner's daughter and her dog appeared, silently watching Nemo. 
He was singing in front of a ritual site he had created near his drawings. The site included two paintings on either side of a small makeshift table, where he placed all the bolts he had removed. Nemo wrote a message on the wall near the main door, so when the owner returned, they would see it. In the message, Nemo stated that cats die, just like his cat did. Nemo sang as he climbed the tower once more. This time, all the bolts had been removed, so he was able to open the skylight. As he ascended the tower, the destruction of the penthouse was shown. In the final scene of the film, we see the tower of furniture Nemo created, and through the skylight, Nemo disappears. So that's it. Hope you enjoy the story. Follow for more videos.